One of the great things that Muslims did in history was to root knowledge. Ta'seel al-ulum. It took us, generally speaking, almost 400 years to do that. Jabir ibn Hayyan is one of the first people to do it. To do it. Jabir ibn Hayyan is a contemporary of Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq and others. And Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, we all believe, is a Sunni. Everyone believes it. His descendants are all Sunnis. But you know, Jabir ibn Hayyan is very close to these Imams. He's also a contemporary of Imam Malik. And Jabir ibn Hayyan was called a Sufi. He's one of the first people to be called the Sufi. And he is one of the greatest minds in chemistry the world has ever seen. And he wrote many things in chemistry. But in one of his book, which is called Kitab al Sab'in, the book of 70, he begins in that book by praising God beautifully. <clears throat> and then what does he talk about? Tazkiyatul Nafs. He is a Sufi after all. And then, this is my recollection, I read the beginning of that a long time ago. He essentially says that if you don't relate to this, you don't relate to the praising of God and Tazkiyatul to Nafs, why would you study chemistry? Why would you study chemistry? Forget it. Chemistry is only for the people who praise God and purify themselves. Isn't that strange? It sounds so strange to us today, but that's the way our science was. Because whether it was chemistry, or whether it was medicine, or whether it was botany, or hydrology, or whatever it was, we studied embryology. We studied the embryos. We knew how the embryo develops very early in our history. And we talk about it with great intelligence, incredible intelligence. But why do we study that? To know ourselves, so that we know God, and so that we establish a proper mu'amala, a proper transaction between ourselves and the world. That's what Jabir ibn Hayyan is talking about. And he is one of the first ones who begins the process of ta'seel, that what are the principial foundations of chemistry that would also apply to mathematics, that would also apply to geometry, that would also apply to anything else, embryology, anything else. Uh, and, and then we will work on this for a long time. One of the most difficult things for us in Islam was to do this with mathematics. And mathematics took us a hundred years longer than anything else. Agriculture, hydrology, veterinary medicine, other things, we developed that right away. But mathematics will take us a long time. Why? Because we take mathematics from the Qur'an, we take it from uh, the Arab tradition, we take it from the rabbis, we take it from the Persians, we take it from the Greeks and the Romans, we take it from everyone that we can find, and then we put it together. And that was not easy to do. This is one of the most interesting things in our history. And the Musa brother, the three Musa brothers, they are part of this. Al Khawarizmi is part of this. And one of the greatest ones is Umar al Khayyam. Umar al Khayyam. And you know he's a great poet. He's a great poet. He's a Sufi, by the way. And of course, if you read his poetry, you're going to say, what? But really, believe me, he's thought, he, he's, it's, it's a Sufi discourse, whether you believe that or not. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. But I do believe that. I love Umar Khayyam. I love him. But one of the main things he wants to do is to get the roots of mathematics. He was brilliant. And again, look at our tradition. We are a tradition that joined science and art. Science and beauty. Most of our scientists are also poets. And they're also what you could call artists, meaning that they produce beautiful things. Isn't that amazing? 
it, it really, we've got to discover this again. 